Hi, my name is Rosie Romanesco. I'm with the Cord Blood Program at Bloodworks Northwest. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a cord blood collection kit for both vaginal delivery and cesarean delivery. First off, I'm gonna, going to discuss the cord blood collection bag made by Fresnius Kabi. When you're ready to do your cord blood collection, you'll need to collect two different items. The first is the cord blood collection kit. This is stored in the storage room and labor and delivery of all of our participating hospitals. While you're in the storage room, you'll also need to grab an admit packet. This has all the information for the potential donor as well as the forms that need to be filled out by the staff. Inside the admit packet, there is a collection guide in case you need a refresher on how to do the collection. There's also instructions in words if pictures are not quite your speed. These instructions include both the vaginal and cesarean deliveries. The next forms in the packet are for the patients. This includes information about cord blood collection and what the patient will need to be filling out. There's a short screening form that the patient will complete with some information about their demographics, address, and anything that might make them ineligible for donating cord blood, such as travel restrictions or family medical history. The patient will also need to fill out a consent form notifying us that they understand what the cord blood collection is and that, that they signed the consent prior to the cord blood collection. The following forms are for hospital staff to complete. This is the delivery information form. This can be filled out after the baby has been born and the cord blood has been collected. This must be entirely completed. At the top part here, a hospital label can be used instead of filling it out by hand. At the very bottom of this form, there's a cord blood collectors line. And we currently have a collector line for two cord blood collectors. At least one of these collectors has to have completed the annual certification within the last 12 months. Please ensure that a trained cord blood collector's name is included here and that they are involved in the collection. A verification signature must be included for all collections. This can be signed by one of the cord blood collectors or anybody involved with the collection. The next form for hospital staff is the maternal sample form. Maternal samples can be collected prior to the delivery or after the cord blood collection. This can be completed by uh, the person who does the collection of the maternal samples. So that could be a nurse or phlebotomist or another lab tech. The bottom of the form is verifying that the information listed above is correct. Now we're going to go into the cord blood collection kit. For either a vaginal or cesarean delivery, you'll want to collect one of these kits. It includes packaging that will need to be returned to Bloodworks Cord Blood Program for processing. Inside the box, we have the collection set. There's supplies in here for your maternal samples, as well as the collection bag for a uh, vaginal delivery by Fresnius Kabi. On the outside, we have the uh, base label. You'll need to set this aside and put it in a place where you won't lose it, such as inside the box. When a patient has been admitted and they're ready to donate their cord blood, then you can go ahead and collect the collection box and the collection set. Many of our collection sites choose to collect the maternal samples upon admission of the patient so there's no additional sticks that are required. Maternal samples are inside the collection set. We recommend labeling each tube with a hospital label that's been printed with the patient's name and date of birth. But if hospital labels are unavailable, you can also use these labels that come with the collection set. Each maternal sample needs two maternal identifiers, such as name, date of birth, and MRN. Once the maternal samples have been collected and labeled, they'll be placed into the tube separator pouch and then put into the biohazard bag for return to the cord blood lab. These can be set into the box so you remember to put, package them with the cord blood unit. When you're ready to do the cord blood collection, you go ahead and open up your supplies here. This supplies include the Fresnius Kabi collection bag. This must only be used for vaginal deliveries. Additional supplies include a hemostat, two blue clamps, a chloroprep swab stick, and two chlorohexidine swabs. When you're ready to begin the collection, 
you go ahead and open the collection bag. Once this bag has been opened, it must be used within 24 hours. Before the collection, you'll want to add the base label to the collection bag. The base label notifies our lab staff that this is cord blood because this collection bag does not indicate that it is cord blood as opposed to adult blood. So the base label will be attached. And then the hospital label from the patient will go directly on here. If we receive a cord blood unit without this base label, we're not able to use it. So please don't forget to include this label. The first step to collecting the cord blood is cleaning. The first thing you'll want to use is the chlorhexidine swab. And this will be used just to wipe any biological residue from the umbilical cord. We recommend using the swab to pull as much biological residue as possible. The next step is to use a chloroprep swab stick. The chloroprep swab stick must be cleaned at the venipuncture site for 30 seconds. Once 30 seconds have elapsed, we recommend letting it dry for 30 seconds. Due to the prevalence of delayed cord clamping, we do recommend that this cleaning process occurs prior to clamping the umbilical cord, since the cleaning and drying takes about 60 seconds. Once the umbilical cord has been cleaned and dried, you'll need to get the collection bag ready. To prepare the collection bag for the collection, you'll want to attach two blue clamps onto the collection bag tubing line. These will be loose and easy to move, not restricting the flow. The next step is to use a hemostat and clip it behind the needle. When the hemostat is closed, it'll prevent air contamination from getting into the collection bag after the needle guard is removed. When you're ready to start the collection, you'll go ahead and remove the needle cap. For the collection, you'll wanna use the needle bevel down, inserted into the vein. The collection bag should be slightly lower than the umbilical cord to aid in the blood flowing to the bag. Once the hemostat has been released, the blood will flow into the collection bag. To prevent clotting, we recommend gently rocking the bag, and as mentioned before, placing the bag slightly lower than the umbilical cord. Please be patient when doing the collection. Even a few more seconds of collection time can make a difference for a patient in need. The number one reason we're not able to use cord blood collections is there's a low volume. For this valuable donation to be used for a patient in need, there does need to be enough active and healthy cells that it can be transfused into a patient. So please wait just a little bit longer before removing the needle. After the cord has blanched white and it's no longer pulsing, you'll go ahead and slide one of the blue clamps over the tubing line. And this will prevent any of the blood that's in the collection bag from getting out, and it'll prevent air from getting into the collection bag. At that point, you'll be ready to remove the needle. The needle guard is attached to the needle, and when you're ready, you'll remove the needle from the umbilical cord, hold, the needle guard cover at the base, and then slide. The needle guard will click when it has gone into place and will not be able to be moved. The next step of the process is to strip the tubing. And the reason that we're doing this is to mix the anticoagulant that's in the bag with the blood that's in the tube. We wanna make sure to get every single last cell from the tubing into the bag so that this can be used for a patient in need. To strip the tubing, you'll take the hemostat against your thumb and then slide it across. This is similar to curling a ribbon. We recommend doing this process twice. It is okay if the blood goes back into the tubing line, but the last time that you do it, you can go ahead and keep it there. Slide the second blue clamp along the tubing line to seal it. At this point, we'll want a permanent seal. So you'll need to tie two tight knots along the tubing line. The first knot needs to be about six inches 
from the edge of the bag. Conveniently, this collection bag is approximately six inches long. So you'll want your first knot to be tied right here. Nothing fancy with this knot, it just needs to be basic. Purpose of this is to prevent any of the blood from leaking out of the bag, and as mentioned earlier, prevent air contamination. You want to pull this tight to prevent any blood from getting from one side to the next. And the next thing you'll do is tie a second knot one inch down from the first knot. This provides an extra sense of security. At this point, the needle can be cut and then discarded into a sharps container. Once your cord blood has been collected, two tight knots added to the tubing line and the needle discarded, verify that the base label and the patient's hospital label is on the collection bag. As mentioned previously, without this information, we do have to discard the unit and all your hard work will have gone to waste. Once the cord blood has been collected and the paperwork has been filled out, the donation is ready to come back to Bloodworks Northwest to our cell processing lab. To package the collection, you want to remove the foil pouch from the collection box and then remove the gel pack. On the gel pack is a bright sticker where the collection and the maternal samples will be going. Behind that sticker is a temperature monitoring device which ensures that the cord blood remains at a stable temperature throughout its duration of travel to us. The cord blood unit will be placed on top of the bright sticker that says, please place cord blood unit and maternal samples here for packaging. The maternal samples inside the biohazard bag will be placed on top of that. The gel pack will be gently folded over and the seams should be even. We suggest thinking of a sandwich when you package your unit. You want the edges of the crust to be nice and even. We don't want any burritos. We don't want any tacos. We'd like a nice sandwich. The cord blood unit, maternal samples, and gel pack will be slid into the foil pouch for transport. If you've collected a very large unit, this could be difficult, but we recommend slowly shimmying this into the bag. This will give us nice, even flaps. You may notice there's a zipper at the top, like you'd find in a Ziploc bag. That does not need to be closed. The whole entire foil pouch will go back into your collection box. This collection bag is sterile and can be used for cesarean deliveries. The collection bag may also be used for vaginal deliveries as well. Before doing the collection, you want to evaluate this aluminum pouch to make sure there are no tears or openings. Before entering the delivery room area, open the silver pouch and remove the inside. Once in the delivery room area, you'll open the transparent pouch. Inside, it is sterile. It can be dropped onto the sterile field. We recommend that sliding the blue clamp near the edge of the tubing line so it's easily within reach of the cord blood collector. For a vaginal delivery, follow the cleaning instructions included with the Fresnius Copy collection bag. For a cesarean delivery, if the membranes were not ruptured prior to the C-section, you'll want to gently remove any biological residue with clean gauze. The chloroprep swab and chlorhexidine swabs are not required. When you're ready to complete the cord blood collection, you'll go ahead and gently close the blue clamp on the tubing. This will prevent any air contamination from getting into the collection bag. The needle cap should be removed and then the needle will be insert, inserted bevel down into the umbilical vein. Once the blue clamp is released, the blood will begin to flow into the collection bag. To prevent clotting, gently rock the collection bag back and forth, and to aid in the collection of the blood, lower the bag below the collection location. This can be dropped off to the side and can be rocked gently by a circulating nurse. Once the umbilical cord stops pulsing and blanches white, it'll be ready 
for removal. We do encourage you to wait as long as possible after beginning the collection until stopping it. Once you're ready to complete the collection, go ahead and clamp the blue clamp again. This will prevent any of the blood from exiting the bag and it'll also prevent any air from getting into the collection bag and contaminating your donation. Gently remove the needle from the umbilical cord, grasp the bottom of the needle, and slide the red needle guard over. It will audibly click when it has been locked and you'll not be able to remove the needle from the needle guard. Using the hemostat from the cord blood collection supplies, you'll go ahead and strip the tubing to ensure that all the cord blood gets into the bag. We recommend stripping the tubing twice to ensure that all the cells get out of the tubing and into the bag. We'll go ahead and do one final strip here. If you're not able to locate the hemostat to do this, you can use the attached blue clamp instead. After stripping the tubing has been completed, we'll go ahead and permanently clamp this. This red clamp is a permanent closure and once clipped, cannot be unclipped. So you go ahead and close that and that will prevent the blood from getting out. Once that's been completed, the tubing line can be cut off and the needle and tubing can be discarded in a sharps container. At this point, you'll wanna go ahead and label this bag. This collection bag has been designed specifically for cord blood collections and indicates on the bag, cord blood collection bag. This bag does not require a base label and your patient label can be applied directly to the collection bag. The C-section collection is, has been completed and the bag has been properly labeled. It is now ready for packaging. Packaging for the Macropharma bag for C-section deliveries or vaginal deliveries is the same as the Fresnius Cobby bag for vaginal delivery. Our maternal samples that we collected earlier have been waiting for us in the box. The foil pouch and gel pack can be removed from the box. The Macropharma collection bag with our cord blood unit will be placed on top of the bright sticker on our gel pack and then our packaged maternal samples will go right on top of that. As with our vaginal collections, you'll go ahead and fold over the gel pack until the ends are even, like a sandwich. This will be placed inside of the foil pouch and gently shimmied to ensure that the cord blood collection bag and the maternal samples remain nicely tucked inside the gel pack. After ensuring that the flaps are even, you'll go ahead and place the collection into the blue collection kit. To return the cord blood unit, you'll want to ensure that the four vital pieces of paperwork are returned. This includes the cord blood short screening form completed by the patient, a consent form from the patient signed prior to the collection of the cord blood, a filled out delivery information form with signed cord blood collector at the bottom, and then maternal sample form that's been completed by a medical professional. If you need a reminder on packaging, there's packaging instructions that are included on the back of the collection box. This kit will be closed up and then returned to the appropriate site at your hospital to be picked up by our couriers during their daily run. If you have any questions about how to complete a cord blood collection, please contact us at 206-689-6696. We can also be reached by email, cordblood at bloodworksnw.org. Thank you for your time today. Have a wonderful rest of your day.